In this video, we're going to take a look at the texture relief tool. This allows you to create pre-generated textures, or it allows you to import a file or an image that you can turn into a texture. So I'll show you how it works really basic first of all, and then we'll use it in an example. So if you open up the texture relief tool, which is here, it will open up a dialogue on the right hand side. So you can do this over the whole relief, over a selected vector or over a selected color. Now the textures that you have, you have pre-generated textures. So you've got spherical, elliptical, cones, pyramids, weaves, and also you can select from a file. So what we'll do first of all is to create a basic texture from a sphere, okay? And what I'm going to do is first of all, select apply. That creates the texture with the settings that I have. So if I rotate around, you can see that it's created this texture. It doesn't look the greatest to be honest with you um, because I haven't changed any of the sizes. So if I undo that and then if I change, let's say the sizes, let's say make it, let's change it to one inch to start with and then apply. You can see that it creates more spheres on the texture. So let's undo that. Now you also have a preview down the bottom. So this will actually generate a preview. Now, the thing with this is that it's only a small preview. So if you have a relief on there, then you won't actually see the preview. OK, so let's say if I turn that preview off. And I'll bring in a relief. Let's say this butterfly and I make it quite large. Let's say let's say I'll do it there and I'll paste that down. And I'll select preview. Now you can actually see that there, but if I were to change the Z height so at the moment, it's three inches. So let's make it 0 0.1. You can see that I can't see it. Okay, so that's one thing to be wary of. Now, if that ever does happen and you need to actually see what it actually looks like, what you can do is toggle off the front relief. So if you click that, then you can see what it actually looks like. Okay, so let me reset that because I don't need it. And then if I select apply, you can see, let's turn off the preview. You can see that it creates all of these spherical shapes at 0.1 high. Now, if I undo that and subtract it, and I'll make it a bit larger so you can see it, select apply, what happens here is that they all get sunk into the model. So that's with subtract, add, we'll add them to the top of the model. So let's undo that again. And I'm going to make it, let's say 0.1 again and apply. Okay, right, so let's take a look at the other ones. So you've got elliptical, apply creates elliptical shapes cone creates these cone shapes pyramid creates these pyramid shapes and you've also got weave which will create a weave going over the top now, all of these settings you can change. So the sizing you can change. So for instance, the bar width on the weave. So let's try changing that. So let's make it 20%. Okay, and you can see that the width of the weave is a lot smaller. If I were to make it, let's say 95%, you can see that the weave is much tighter together. Now let's undo that. So if we go back to spherical 
And what you can do here is let's go and apply it just so you can see it. Okay. You can change the distances for these. So let's change that to 50 and then select apply. Okay. And you can see that it's brought the spheres closer together. So if I undo that and I change that to 50, you can see it's created this sort of quilt sort of pattern. Now you can also change the overlap. So if I put these back, so we've gone back to the original sort of texture. Let's change the overlap to be 50. So now you can see that they actually, each line of texture sits in between by 50%. So it's not giving me a perfectly uniform texture. Now what you can do with this is you can also change one of the distances. So if I change the Y distance to 50% and keep the overlap to 50, you can sort of create these sorts of nice effects. So if I go back, let's see what this one looks like at 50. Okay, so you get that nice quilt pattern. And let's change that to say 25%. So that gives me sort of a honeycomb pattern. Okay, so let's undo that. And now what I'm going to do is import a file. You've also got blend edges down here. I'll explain that in a moment so let's go to file now when I do this I know that I'm going to have a little bit of a problem I've left the spacing set up here this needs to go back to the default values so if I select a file and let's choose let's say let's say this wood that I have here now you'll see that maximum Z height is one inch. Now you can change that there to be the size that you want or select open and then it will give you the height here. Now you can also turn on a preview. Now it's telling me that subtract isn't supported for preview. So turn that to be add and then you'll get a preview of it. And you can see that it's really, really high and it doesn't really look great at the moment. So let's put that back. Let's put it down to, let's say, I don't know, let's say 0.1. Okay, and there you can see all the planks of wood. Now, at the moment, I know that this isn't going to work. So if I select apply. And then let's turn off the preview because I don't need it you can see that I've got these lines going through the planks of wood. Now, the reason being is that it's trying to basically overlap the images as it's doing it. So what you need to do is make sure that you put those back to the default values. Now, don't worry, every time that you open up this tool, it will go back to those default values. So don't worry too much about that. It's only if you're using, say, one of the pre-generated textures and you change these and then stay in the tool. So whilst we're here, let's take a look there. Let's have a look at blend edges. So if I select blend edges and let's say a quarter of an inch, what it will do, it will try to blend the edges a little bit. Now it only really works with tileable images. So it makes a perfect transition. So I don't tend to use that that much, to be completely honest with you. So let's turn that off. And I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to go back to the default values. So 100 and 0. So now if I do it, you can see it basically puts that plank of those planks of wood on the screen for me. And it creates that texture for me. Now you can also make this larger if you wanted to, or make it smaller. If you make it smaller, let's scale it and let's make it say three inches and apply. 
it will create exactly the same sort of effect. So you'll get all of these lines. So if it's not a tileable image, then you'll probably get these lines. Okay, so let's do this to a vector. So if I undo that, and then let's take a plan view and let me just draw the box and let's draw another box. Okay, select both of those and then I'm going to make it large again, let's say, let's say six inches. And then if I select apply now, it will just do it over the whole thing like it did before. Let's undo that. Make this maybe a bit larger. But what I'm going to do is selected vector. So it's just going to do it within these two vectors that I've got selected. Okay, so that just creates the texture there. If I wanted to, I could delete those and I've got that texture. So using that, you can see that it's quite powerful. So what we can do is if I were to Let's say close the tool and reset this. And let's bring in a piece of clip art. So let's say, let's say this polar bear that I have here. I know that he's quite smooth, so I don't really want him to be that smooth. So let's put him in the center. I'm going to go to the options and I'm going to paste an outline vector. If you forget to do this, all that you need to do is go to the vector drop down, create, and create a relief boundary. Okay, so that's created a, a vector around the edge of it. Now, the reason that I've done that is so I can create the texture to that vector. So if I open up the texture relief tool, I'm going to use selected vector, and I'm going to select that vector going to go from file, select a file, and let's try and find some fur that I have. Let's see what I've got. Let's, uh, let's say that fur. Select open. Now again, this is going to be really, really high. So let's change that to be, let's say 0 0.05. I can preview it if I want to. Okay, so that, that looks okay. And then I'm going to select apply. You can see that it's created the texture over the polar bit. Now, you can also see that it's created this line at the top here. That's where it's trying to overlap. So what I may need to do is make this just a little bit larger so I don't get that line. So if I undo that, let's scale the height and width, let's make it 13 inches and then apply. Okay, and you can see that I don't have that line anymore, basically because the texture is larger than what it was before. So I can then close that. I can delete that if I want to, it's entirely up to you. And you can see that it's created this texture for me. Now, if I wanted to, most of the time when doing textures from images, they will be quite rough. And a lot of the time you'll have to go into the smoothing afterwards. So I'll just smooth that a little bit, just to make it look a bit nicer. Okay, and there you can see that it's added this quite realistic texture onto the polar bear. So that's how you use the texture relief tool.